on the road up to Gray's Peak and it is already filling up the lower lot. So I thought I would take my e-bike up this final three miles on the, I would say, light duty four wheel drive road. Did see a lot of Subarus making it up, but there are a few rough spots. We are going to access this beautiful resource here that's just very convenient right on the front range. Do a little class three climbing on Kelso Ridge and time permitting, also drop by Gray's Peak on our way back down from Tories. It's gonna to be a really cool Gray's and Tories adventure. A little intro class three climbing on Kelso Ridge. Getting most of the way up the three mile road here, almost to the base of the Gray's Peak trailhead. Even some cool mining history in the area, like this shack coming up right now. Pretty neat. Peak Trailhead. Really nice setup they got here. So, fairly obvious. We're right here, heading down the trail. When we get here, we are going to step up onto Kelso Ridge. And from there, Tory's Peak, and then off to Gray's. Should be a great trip. Peak. Which one is great? That is amazing. We are literally just flying up this trail. Super nice, well maintained. Quite a few people, but very friendly. The only thing I thought was ridiculous was the parking. And the flowers are just amazing. You could just go up here for that alone and you'd be completely satisfied. But there's a lot more to come. So let's get us some technical train. Enjoy the next leg of the adventure on Kelso Ridge. There she is, right there. That's the start of the ridge. Tories right there, and then to the right, we've got Kelso Ridge. A few hundred yards up the Kelso Trail, some old mining ruins, and the people heading on up. So we are just to the north on the Kelso Ridge Trail.
trick to making these easy is stemming or spreading your legs and pushing out in these kind of open book formations. That's called stemming and it makes it really easy to stick. And then you can also kind of put your feet behind you, allowing you to lean in and it gives you a lot of security. So you're not gonna kind of huck out of that open book feature. So one of the really cool things about this route in particular is you can take that dirt path to the right just past my shadow. Or you can kind of stay over here to the left and try your hand at a little more class three and some ridge traversal. Excellent spot for training. Although up higher, it does just generally get more serious. And you can see that on the frame up there. All right, we are boogieing right along. And this is actually an even more unique and cool trail than I remember. This is a fantastic training climb because you've got so many options. You can just do one of these really easy dirt hikes, or you can jump out onto the ridge proper, gain up some confidence, and that's gonna really make you feel good. And when you get in the higher, more exposed areas, knowing that you've already climbed a bunch of it. So, fantastic opportunity to learn how to climb class three. And if this lower portion is making you nervous, you can always just go back. No problem. and climbing. Now we're at a little dirty patch. Lots of ways to go. You could go behind me over my left shoulder here and just stay in the dirt. Um, but I am going to go ahead and take a little steeper route. And I'm pretty sure this doesn't cliff out. It doesn't cliff out often and they're not bad when it does. So I'd say it's worth taking a risk. Stay on the ridge proper and enjoy the views. They're really just fantastic, particularly up the trail. Great adventure on that white tower. Holy moly. Wait, I really forgot what a gem this trail is. It is just fantastic. Lots of options, all of them good. Whether you want to do a little class three adventure or just take an easy kind of dirt side hill escape route, it's all there, at least to the upper sections. gaining a little altitude now as you can see down to my left definitely getting a little more interesting and beautiful a little bit of class three there really pretty easy class three if I
tentatively making our way up. I need a little further right though to hit the adventure zone. Alright, so I met a few friends that joined me on a quandary peak of ascent in the early spring. And now I'm just kind of hanging out with them and really they don't need coaching, they're doing totally good. But I, we're gonna call it moral support. Better to keep your feet low so that way you're more balanced. And now it's probably a good time to switch sides. And then she can pop on over to her left, stick her foot in that big yummy foothold right there. Boom, baby. And then make sure you got some, yeah, some good hands like that. Nice work. So that is how it's done and done right. Generally, keeping your feet low on one side actually establishes a little better balance. So she's doing fantastic and I'm pretty much just in the way now. So see, she's doing the straddle and it looks secure. She's totally safe. And now the key is just to find some nice feet and try to save some energy. If you keep your feet too far behind you, they end up anchoring you and you get off balance. It is important to keep your feet under your body because being off balance takes a lot of energy. Okay, we are well clear of the knife edge and all technical difficulties. So Carl Decker would be proud to present the top of Kelso Ridge and Torrey's Peak. And it was super fun doing it with a couple of fans actually that uh, got to guide them. And you can hear the chaos, but actually it's not bad. So this is the summit scene. We're currently looking at Mount Snicktow. Cupid, Loveland Pass is in the background. To the left, that's Grizzly Peak. I've got some great videos climbing Grizzly Peak via this Black Mountain. And that's gonna be a class four climb, really cool. If you look further to the left, that's Lawani Peak. I believe Eighth Basin is right on the other side of that. Then if we pan a little more to the left is Gray's Peak. I've got a beautiful video on that, I'll post. And then looking further left, you can see the descent on Gray's Peak. Far left is Edwards Mountain. In the dark background is Mount Evans. That is the whole deal. You can even see the sawtooth is that shadowed ridge. Look down into Stevens Basin here. And the shadowy mountain in the background is McClellan Mountain. Really epic four-wheel drive road. I rode on my bike and I'm gonna use some of that footage that I took from that ridge to cover this climb. Let's trot on over to Grace Peak. Well, look who we have here. Oh, I could have made a sweater out of that. <laughs> I do have a huge surprise. All right, you guys, let's all stay together. Oh my God, it's twins. That is the cutest thing. Oh my God, you guys are precious. Show me your little jumpy skills. Woo, nice. Good work, little guy. Right over to Mamakins. Oh, there's the whole family. Oh, that's as close as I need to be, my friend. I think I'll just stand by this giant Karen see just how beautiful your family is. We are on our way up the far side of the saddle from Tories, headed toward Gray's Peak now. And what a special time it's been. A bunch of cool people, as well as that beautiful goat family. So, really neat. And there's nothing that spectacular about this trail, but we'll knock it out.
I've had a fantastic time. I've met so many cool people. They've all helped me make my videos as well as subscribed. And it makes it a joy to just rock it up here and hit the summit of Gray's Peak, which is where we're at right now. And this is looking back on Kelso Ridge and Torrey's Peak. Beautiful views looking back to Chihuahua Lake as well as Black Mountain. That is a beautiful climb. Zooming out a little, this is a Karoo Creek Basin way down at the bottom. And that kind of leads you out to Keystone. Heading to our left is Ruby Mountain. And I have a special place for that mountain. I had one of the coolest climbs I have ever did up Ruby Mountain and then summoning Gray's Peak. You can see that trail to access Gray's from the west side right there. And then this is the summit proper here to back to Stevenson Gulch. My second trip up to Gray's Peak to try to recover my drone controller. Wow, mama and baby right here. They are beautiful. Well, it's time to wrap this trip up. We have had a great journey, aside for the double visit to Gray's Peak to try to find my remote control for the drone. That was a sad moment for me. But short of that, incredible. And a lot of people are kind of down on Gray's and Tories because it's so crowded. And parking is difficult, so be warned. But man, I made a ton of friends, had great adventures. Kelso Ridge is the perfect place to train to climb on class three, because you can Take it easy if you want, or you can really push yourself. Obviously, that's in good conditions. In bad conditions, it's gonna be dangerous no matter what, class three, high exposure. So keep that in mind, but fantastic trip, as usual. <laughs> I know I say that every time, but, uh, but it really was. And I wouldn't let the crowds shy you away from this at all. I would aim for a weekday, and the toughest thing is gonna be getting a parking space. There's so many people and cool people, you could probably easily hitchhike up just from the lower parking lot right at I-70. Personally, I rode my bike. So that's my story. Great novice scramble training. Good times, fun people. Highly recommend. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you on the next adventure. Certainly that won't be long. This part's always nerve wracking, but I'm pretty sure, oh yes, it's right here. So, super sweet. There's my quick way home. <laughs>